And because of that love that he showed in the cross, he gave to us we should show to others. And that's the love of God also. You know, many times we get caught up in this thing about love, and the world has another concept of it. It's called lust. It's not I love you, it's I lust you. It's not that I want that, I lust that. It's not that, oh, I'm better than I lust, I lust. And that's the thing, that's the world belief. And that's what the world is. The world does not know true love. It is not real love. But it's lust. And yes, lust can be used uh, as a term for love. Because they do. Because we see something we want. When we see something where we, we touch, we feel something that we want. And then we can't control it. And then when it does happen, then we wish it never did. And that's how sin works. And that's how the world is. And we have to understand that this world is, is not our home if we're saved today. So there should be no reason if you're saved today to get, I mean, yes, maybe you get slowed down by the world sometimes and just get sidetracked, but the world should not overcome us. The world should not take over our lives. We should have victory over that because as Christians, as children of God, we have this victory. And you can have it also. And yes, I mean, maybe, hey, we all preach like this there, they show us slides and show you this. Man, it's time to get up and do something. That's what I'm trying to tell you, because if you just sit back and don't change your life and don't change the, the maybe the, the environment that you're from, and, and you can blame any people, you can blame your family, you can blame this, you can blame your school, you can blame the government, but you need to get your own faith. You need to get your faith and know that you have it and do something about it. Just sitting back and waiting, the devil has you right day. He has you right where he wants to. Oh, who cares if you got saved? If you're not going to do stuff for God, if you're not going to be a
Well, I went over a few things, and some of you probably going, yeah, yeah. You stepped on my toe. What? You stepped on my toe, too. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. If we're realizing this, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you love the world, because some of you are like, oh, I didn't raise my hand. The thinking in your mind, in your heart, is it consuming you? Turn your mind to 1 John. 1 John, right in the same book, but right over to chapter 2, and some of the greatest, greatest, Play this day scripture. Uh, and I, I was when I, when I look at some of this, uh, people write sermons about this. You know what I mean? And, and the one guy, he, he was trying to like, and, and I know what church it was. They accepted homosexuality. So they had to be real careful here. They had to be real careful at the start of it, at the loss of the flesh. They said, well, sometimes this means it's more of a moral issue. Are you kidding me? The lust of the flesh is, is sin, brother. And that's all it is to it. It's sin. And any time you lust after something, I don't think they say you lust after something good. Well, I don't think so. That's not the same thing. It's desiring is one thing, but lusting is another. And when I when they say that, oh, lust of the flesh is easy, and then they go off on the other stuff, well, I'm telling you right now, all three are sin. That's what we're going to go over here. Now, my thing is, is that Jesus was tempted by these temptations. And so are we also. Obviously, Jesus had better chance of him because of being the Son of God, but and being the God of the But he still had to go through the temptation. But then that's the thing. Jesus didn't go through it by himself, though. You know what I mean? He had a heavenly father, he had the word of God, he had the scripture, he had the truth. And he was able to fight it and beat temptation, so are we. So let's go over those. Now, You've heard this before. Anybody that preaches on love, this is the verses. And man, are they powerful. You ready? First John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. All right? Let's go. Are you ready? Everybody pay attention, right? Okay. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Okay? All right? If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You get that? Wow. Okay, listen to this. For all that is in the world, listen, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You get that? I didn't see anywhere there was a moral issue anywhere here. It's all against God. It's sin. It's the world. And it is of this world. Now listen. And the world, this is verse 17, and the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Well, I don't know about you. I would rather abide forever. How many would like to abide forever? Not, not on this earth, but, but in heaven also. We'll abide forever. Mm -hmm. Who wants to just die temporarily and go to hell? Anybody? Yeah, nobody wants to go to hell. No, not, not, when, not when it comes to this, right? Exactly. So I don't want to go to hell, man. Thanks for pointing it out. All right, so, so yeah, we don't want to go to hell. We don't want to die in, in a support of death. But I want to abide with God forever. But now let's go back to this is what Jesus was tempted with. The lust of the flesh. Oh, we're, we're all the time. And I, I gotta be careful, I can't really go into it, but anything that, that we think is gonna be good or, or satisfies, we want to do that. And then we find out it's not the right thing. Whatever, whatever that may, may be. So the lust of the flesh is dissatisfied. And anything like that. How about how about that? You know, everybody has that. You know, everybody goes to massage parlors, you know, they get their hair done, all this stuff. Like, well, I'm sorry about that. Not the ladies that do there, but the ones that always get their hair done, they get their nails done, they get massaged, and I think that's okay. So, you know, you're probably one of these, right? <clears throat> so, so you get this stuff in, and all that feels good. They want to do that because it satisfies the flesh. That's all, obviously, what that does. Then how about this? The second one. So, a lot of us deal with the lust of the flesh, right? That's temptation. We all do, right? We can all work on it. I don't know how I do it. I ask the Lord, please help me. I, I quote scripture. I pray and I say, Lord, please help me through this temptation. That's you know right. what happens every time? I make it through. Stronger and better Christian every time. Amen? And here's the thing. Here's what you got to know. How about the lust of the eyes? That's pretty simple, right? You see it? Oh, look at that man with the eye. Look at that. You know? Instead of just saying, oh, wow, that's nice. I'm getting a lot of weight. The lie of sister. How am I going to get one of those? You see that? Where the girls see their, their, their home, they see this beautiful palace. Oh, I want to live in that, you know? Oh, it's beautiful because you see it in the eyes first. And so it goes through your eyes and through your mind and through your heart. And before you know it, the lust of the eyes just tears you up. I always thought about it's people having stuff. And I like stuff, don't get me wrong. I like having stuff. And 
nice stuff. But you ever see those people that like nice stuff and they'll go out of their way to get this nice stuff? Mm -hmm. They'll go into uh, a crazy amount of debt? Uh, you probably know a lot of people like that. How about most of America's number one religions is terrorism? So because of that, because of that, they, they have so much stuff and they become this thing called borders. You ever see that?
good for you. Okay? They're good for you. Okay? All right. I got this chicken. But what do I do about the, the, the kind of insects they bring in? So they, these chickens battle with mites. So they have these mites. But where are these mites coming from? Well, we find out. We find this little mouse. So we thought it was a mouse. We thought it was a mouse. It looks small, nice little collar, you know, it looks so friendly. Little kids are patting it, you know, feeding the cheese, feeding it cheese, and then like in, in like four days it comes back and the thing's big as a dog. My goodness, that's not a mouse. That's a rat. You see its long tail, and it's like it's changed now. It's not a friendly little pet, it's not something I want to put in my hand, it's not something I want to feed anymore because if it gets any bigger, it's going to start eating the chicken. It's not all the way full grown yet. But it was funny for a week when we just thought this was the nicest little mouse, you know. Oh, I want to touch it. I want to pet it. And my daughter and my wife, the smart, my best sweet mothers, she said, don't touch it. You don't know where it's from, you don't know where it really is. And now my daughter's happy when she didn't touch it. When she found out it was a rat, it's kind of like, I don't like it. No, I'm not friends with it anymore, so she doesn't want to be like it. So here's what happened. This rat has to <coughs> Once again, the call of man is there. You must kill this thing, you know? And here I'm going, I wish I could see that, so I'm not going to shoot it. I'd love to, I just like to take it off, you know? What am I going to do? I'm going to try it. But I'm not going to use any trap. I'm not going to use a spirit trap. I'm going to use a trap that goes. Right? Just like that. Thanks. He's a mature guy, I love it. So I'm going to do this thing, I'm going to smack this thing down, right? It's going to get hit. So my wife goes and buys a rat trap. And I mean, it looks like a bear trap, though. This thing is huge. I'm afraid to set the thing. I might set it with a stick, you know what I mean? This thing comes down, it's going to take my hand off. So we set this huge trap on it. And we watch. And we see the mouse running back and forth. Like, why don't they just get the thing going there and get the, the peanut butter and butter? I mean, I like butter. It's like, eat the peanut butter. I love peanut butter. I want to go out there and let the trap and probably take my tongue off. So here it is, it's set right there. And the mouse keeps coming. The rat keeps coming out. The chew on it, stuff away. It's like, why won't that thing go off? It does it again. But it keeps coming back more and more. Isn't that just like sin, though? I mean, yeah, oh, that feels good. Oh, that tastes good. I'm going to go back and get some more. I'm going to go back and get some more. The problem is, he keeps coming back. We're going to get him eventually. But for some reason, I think the trap is too big for him. But he's sitting there, he keeps coming back. He knows something's up, though, because he looks at it, he nibbles and runs away. But I'm telling you, sooner or later, he's going to keep coming back. He's going to keep sucking on that trap. And finally, he's going to eat enough peanut butter to get big as a dog. And that thing's going to come down on him. And I told my daughter, you don't want to see it. Because when that thing comes out, it's going to split him in two. It's going to blow him up. But you know what, though? But then and ever later, you can't get too mad at that rat. You can't get too upset at him. He's just trying to survive. But you know what? He keeps going back. You know what's going to happen to him? He's going to get crushed in that trap. But isn't that just like sin, though? Man, you keep going back to it. You keep going back to it. But it wasn't that bad. I'm not as bad as him or her. And if you are saved, that was one of some of my things. 
was if you are saved, if you are saved, now let's do something. Come on, some of you, some of you are right at the brink of going somewhere. I know you, I've watched you, I've watched you do Sunday school. You're this close to doing something great for God. But you know what happens though? You start saying, oh, it's, not, it's, it's my family that's fault. It's the streets. Oh, we don't understand. And you know what? You're getting closer to the track. And then, oh, this sin, it's not that bad. But you keep going with that track. And you know by the time that you are in tenth or eleventh grade, you know what happens? Track. And you know it. You can't sit there and tell me different. The only reason you quit coming to church, the only reason you just say, oh, I'm not, maybe I'm not saved, the only reason is because you're caught in sin. And you cannot follow those tracks. I'm not saying that you've ever got a sin. Man, for all sin, I'm sure they're glory to God. But you'll know how to handle your sin. Take it to Christ. Take it to Jesus. The one who washed away your sin will cleanse you and keep you whole. And you know what you can do from now on? You want to love God? Ask that question. Say it again. Say, do I love God? Okay, are you saved? Okay. Do you pray to Him? Not for what you want. Don't be praying to God for a million dollars. Pray that God helps you. God, you don't understand my, my home life. Give it to God. You don't understand this case. Give it to God. You can have this here. You can pray for it. How about your Bible? When's the last time? Maybe this is hard for us. When's the last time you said not to serve God? Not, not something they told you to read. Not something that, oh, I better be my reading schedule. But where you just say, you know what? I need God. Sit down, open the Bible. Whatever it is, you read it. Whatever it is, you read it. How about that? Because you know what the Bible has? The answer. And how about this? I, you know when I read the Bible? How about applying it? There's so many times we read it and then we do it. What do I do? You just write it. Just do it. Give it to God. And read the Bible and apply it. How about this? How about church? You might say, well, it's not important to go to church that much. Is it? What are you doing when you're not in church? <laughs> if you say church isn't important, then when you're not in church, you're going on talking about Jesus. You're not in church, so you're going to mission to Well, I'm not in church because I'm not preaching on the street. I don't think so. You're not in church because you want to do what you want. And nobody's making you. I understand that. Your parents say you're not going because we don't go. You're embarrassing us. Man, most parents want you to go. And if you told your parent you're going Sunday night, Wednesday night, they would be like, what happened? Why do you want to go to church? Because they might be watching you. And if you've got true salvation and the real salvation, they can see a change in you. They can say, man, there's something different. Yeah, because he has a love of God. So, how about ministry? Some of you are at that age and I help. BBS, some of you can help next week. Uh, uh, bus ministry, some of you can help already. <laughs> I'm telling you. You, you, get, you get things for me, you can help me an usher. You can help, uh, uh, help with all those kind of ministries. And I'm telling you, there's so much opportunity, and you must take it. How about being a I'm not saying you go around preaching this. Some of you probably are like that. But how about giving a track? How about, how about just telling somebody to come to church? How about just saying that God loves you? Those are things that will be your business. So let's do these things. So my question to you, do you love God? And if you do love God, then you are saved. And let's do something about it. Okay? Let's pray.